Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we'll be exploring the coplanar one tangent burn orbital transfer. If you haven't seen my video on the homing transfer, I recommend that you have a look at that before you continue with this video, as some of the maths I will be skipping over because it's already been covered there. We'll begin by labelling the initial and final orbits. The initial orbit has a radius of r a, and the final orbit has a radius of r b. Just like we did in the Hohmann transfer video, I'm going to label two points, point A and point B. These points are where the two burns occur. Between point A and point B, we have a transfer ellipse. It's along this ellipse that the aircraft or satellite goes from point A to point B. Unlike the Hohmann transfer, however, only burn A is tangential. So only delta V A is tangential. Delta V B is not tangential. Therefore, unlike delta V A, we do have to take into account direction for delta V B. The way that we calculate delta V B is like this. This line is the tangent to the circle, or I should say the tangent to the final orbital circle. This line is the tangent to the transfer ellipse. Delta VB can be found here. Now, between the tangent to the circle and the tangent to the ellipse, there is an angle To calculate the total delta V, we need to know the delta V at A and add it to the delta V at B. Revisiting the math from the Hohmann transfer, we know that delta V A is given by this equation here. Delta VB is a little bit more tricky to calculate than delta VA. This is mainly due to the fact that delta VB is non-tangential, so you do have to consider the direction as well as the magnitude of the vectors. Just like in the Hohmann transfer, the magnitude of the delta VB is calculated by the difference in the velocities of the transfer ellipse and the final orbit. However, I'm going to do it in a slightly different way. I'm going to calculate a few things separately. I'm going to calculate the velocity of the final orbit at point B. So I'm going to label this V, F for final, B for at point B. Now this is just the velocity of a circle. Next. I'm going to calculate the velocity of the transfer ellipse, hence Vt, at point B, hence Vtb. This is just the velocity of the ellipse. Do check out the video of Home and Transfer to see these in more detail. Now, however, because delta V isn't just magnitude but directional as well, 
we need to add the directional. Looking at the diagram, I can label the tangent to the circle as V, F, B, and the tangent to the ellipse as V, T, B. Therefore, to calculate delta VB in full, we can use the cosine rule. And that is how you calculate the total delta VB. Unless you're given the value of thigh, you might need to calculate it yourself. On the picture, you can see I have an ellipse. I've labelled the centre, a focus point, and the periapsis. The blue circle has a radius that is equal to the semi-image axis of the ellipse. I'm going to label a point on the ellipse P. Point P here will be the point on the transfer ellipse where the burn occurs to put it onto the final orbit. I'm going to draw an angle between point P, focus, and the periapsis. This angle is known as the true anomaly. You may see it as this or this. The true anomaly is given by this equation. A is the A is the semi-major axis, E is the eccentricity, which if you don't know, um, the eccentricity, if you don't know uh, where to draw, I'll just draw at the side, E is given by 1 over RA AT. From point P, I'm going to draw a line vertically upwards until I hit the circle. And I'm going to label the point where it reaches the circle P dash. Using the centre, I'm going to draw a line between P dash and the centre. The angle between the periapsis, the centre, and point P dash is known as EA or the eccentric anomaly. And the eccentric anomaly has to be in radians and it's given by this equation. You might be wondering why I'm doing this and how this relates to phi. Well, phi 
can be calculated using this equation. As you can see, if you don't have phi, you will need the true anomaly to calculate it. You don't actually need the eccentric anomaly to calculate phi. The reason why I've included the eccentric anomaly is because you do need to know the eccentric anomaly in order to calculate the time of flight of the transfer. And time of flight is given by this equation. I'm just going to call it TOF for short. Now we've got all of the equations to calculate the one tangent transfer. I've put everything that we've gone through in this video all together so you can see it all at once. Hopefully this helps. I hope this video helped. If you do have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll try and answer as soon as I can. That's the end of the video for now and stay tuned for more.